Travel in Guyana. My name is Alec Weiss and today we are on the subject of Guyanese music. Today I have with me joining us the very prestigious professor from the Ohio University here in Athens, Ohio, Dr. Vibert Cambridge. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Cambridge. Thank you very much, Alec. To get started, how many in which countries does Guyana get its musical influences from? Guyana gets its musical instrument heritage, I would say, from every continent in this world except probably Australia. Um, you can see them today in the instruments that are currently um, popular. And that popularity would vary if it's in urban Guyana or in rural Guyana oh, okay. or in the hinterland of Guyana. And again, it all depends where in the hinterland um, you are. But um, you have, in terms of our Amerindian uh, musical heritage, um, you have um, flutes, you have drums, you have rattles, you have maracas. So in all of the instrument categories, um, shaking instruments, percussion instruments, wood, wind instruments, and blowing instruments, you find examples from our Amerindian heritage. From our African heritage, you again find that range of um, wind instruments, um, of uh, stringed instruments, of um, drumming instruments, and percussion instruments. You would find, um, you know, many people don't know that the banjo has its origins in Africa. Oh, really? So on our Brazilian border, you would find the barimbau, uh, which is that instrument that the Brazilians use when they're doing capoeira. Yeah. That is um, currently present in um, Guyanese society, and it is an example of a stringed instrument. Oh, okay. In terms of our drumming heritage, um, well, um, in Guyana you find a range of drumming instruments and styles representing many of the major uh, ethnic groups that I mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, there are some drums that we call um, the Congo drums. Um, there are the drums that we call djembe, which are more West African, mm -hmm. Senegalese um, kind of drum. We have drums that, um, are, uh, that reflect how they're made. For example, okay. Rohan Segar speaks about, in his research, identifying something called the stave drum, which is a drum made from barrels, like oak barrels. Um, you have drums made from tree trunks. Wow. They're folks they are making drums out of um, PVC uh, piping. Oh, sure. But one of the interesting uh, drums you would find in Guyana, uh, it's the hog drum. Mm -hmm. It's a friction drum and its origins are very much uh, Congo. You see it in Brazil, you see some of it in uh, Suriname, but it's, you know, that's one of the uh, the, the African drums that you have uh, in Guyana. Um, in the, the, the other uh, African instruments uh, that you would find in Guyana would be claves, uh, maracas, uh, various metal uh, instruments, you know, come particularly from Ghana. You've got a lot of gongs and charms. So you may not see many of the instruments in there in their forms that are similar to what are in Africa, but you would see their heritage, you would see their resonance there. Gotcha. For example, among um, in our Asian, uh, the musical instruments um, from our Asian heritage, you have a drum called the dolak, and that is, um, it has now become a, a domestically made instrument. The preferred wood is the mango tree, and the uh, membrane, um, could range from goat skin to an old x-ray film. Oh, wow. Right. So um, I would say that, uh, to summarize it, uh, the evidence of musical instruments um, of our ancestral peoples are still very present. So what is your favorite part about Guyanese music, and what do you find unique about it? My particular, the thing that really triggers me with Guyanese music, um, is aid in diversity of it. Um, you know, from our uh, African musical traditions, 
you have not only the instrumental traditions, but you've got the vocal traditions, and you've got the the the, 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 you know, the, the essence of you know African um, vocal music is call and response and praise and blame. So our calypsos and those kinds of things come up there. Um, my, I am very satisfied when I find uh, or experience fusions when musical traditions from various elements of our heritage come together. You know, for example, there is a British um, composer, classical composer by the name of Alan Bush. Um, Alan Bush once composed uh, an opera that was called Sugar, Sugar Cane Johnny. Mm -hmm. And in this, he has a piece called Quarantine Kwe Kwe. Now, Kwe Kwe is a traditional African pre-marriage ceremony. It is percussive. It's it's a drum bass. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a it's a foot on earth bass um, rhythm. Okay. He uses the piano to create that kind of sound. I just when I discovered that piece of music in Leipzig, Germany, uh, in 2006, it just blew me away. Um, another example of fusion that blew me away was in about the about 60s when the melody of an Indian. Uh, the theme song from that movie, uh, Dolari, the theme song, or one of the songs was um, Sahani Rat. And when that Indian melody uh, is played by the Guyanese in, his, in the 60s, the early string band combos, you created a song that was so uh, memorable mm -hmm. that even today, when Guyanese imagine the possibility of living in a peaceful society where there's racial harmony. That piece of music uh, is, always, uh, is always conjured up in my mind and in the minds of many other people. Um, another bit of fusion that I found quite exciting was when um, the Theatre Guild in Guyana brought together steel pan, uh, Caribbean steel pan, European bass, Indian um, sitar, um, an Indian tabla and um, the, the Western flute, you know, um, Keith Waite on flute, Marcelal on sitar, Roy Geddes on pan, Kishore on tabla, and um, what's his name, uh, Keith Joseph on bass. And, and just bringing those instruments of Africa, Asia, and Europe together to create music to me is memorable. Uh, Hugh Sam who like Chopin celebrates our national folk music, but composes and arranges and bass, you know, drawing upon our Guyanese folk uh, music uh, to, to, to generate this. That, that, that's fascinating. Yeah. Also, when you see the music stepping beyond the borders, and you see uh, you know, singers in Newfoundland and in England, uh, people celebrate singing sea shanties are singing shanties that were created out of the Guyana experience. It's that kind of fusion that excites me and kind of uh, encourages me to think about what is going to come down the pike when there are better technologies for collaboration so you can collaborate globally. Uh, that I think is going to be a fascinating thing. In terms of where it's going in the future, there's a, an experimentation an experiment taking place now, drawing upon masquerade, or it's a new, a rehabilitation of an experiment, where you're drawing upon the music of masquerade uh, to create, um, to, 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 to influence, to infuse contemporary styles like jazz. So there is a spirit of a foot that I think uh, will um, bloom into something quite interesting. Sounds like Guyana has a very rich musical history and great background. So Dr. Cambridge, thank you. I really appreciate you coming to talk to us. It was great to hear your insight and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So stay tuned for our next segment of Traveling Guyana and we will see you guys soon. Thank you.